Hello again, I am Blunty. Now, video games, eh? They're big, and they're only getting bigger. Game patches are big. Game patches these days are like orders of magnitudes larger than whole games were just several years ago. The DLC is big, and our hard drives and SSDs, well, they've gotten a bit bigger too, but they are finite. And considering we're headed into the holiday season soon and are about to be overwhelmed with a wealth of game releases we're all very eager to play, I'm sure, many of us will need to do something about our game drive space soon. And speaking personally, I prefer to expand my space rather than start deleting games from my library that I might want to go back to without a fuss at some time in the future. I like having a library sitting there of installed games just in case I can play whatever takes my fancy without having to spend ages reinstalling the damn things. I know you know what I mean. Fortunately, today's video is a sponsored look at a new PNY SSD, specifically the XLR8. <laughs> Oh, so 90s accelerate. The CS3040M.2 NVMe SSD. Now, depending on your local pricing, it should be the cheapest or at least one of the cheapest Gen 4 SSDs whose specs make it worth a look at to upgrade not just for your PC, but maybe a PlayStation 5 too, because it does beat the minimum specs of what the PlayStation 5 wants. Unfortunately, while it is specced above what the PS5 asks, and by that I mean it's got a rated sequential read speed of up to 5,600 megabits per second, which puts it just comfortably above the PS5's expected spec range of 5,500 megabits per second, and better yet, it comes with a nice chunky five-year warranty and promises low power consumption, which aside from always being a nice thing for your electronics to do, will also help keep it running cool and at its best efficiency. But coming back to that, unfortunately, right now, today, Sony hasn't seen fit to allow Australians to try out the beta support for the M.2 SSD storage expansions, so I'm burying this thing in my PC to demo for you instead. Hold the presses! Just as I was getting approval from PNY to post this video, Sony did finally see fit to deign us with the glorious presence of the long-awaited firmware update for the PlayStation 5. And not just the beta this time, but the full-on release that everybody has access to. 307 days after launch and we can finally use the M.2 slot in our PS5s. Hooray for small mercies. So, new plan, I'm slamming it into the PS5 first, where it did indeed report just over its box rated speed, pinging in at 5,636.778 megabits per second, just above its box rated speed of 5,600 and well above Sony's required 5,500. So let's slide over my Miles Morales Spider-Man install from the onboard onto the M.2, seeing as it is one of PlayStation's party piece games and one of the first titles they demoed pre-launch when bragging about their super fast SSD speeds. And it works flawlessly. Unlike my gameplay skills, which seem to have rusted slightly. Give me a break, I haven't played this game in like six months. Don't make fun of me, do badly. It runs great is the point. Identical, in fact, to the onboard storage. So there you go. Proof is in the pudding. As for PC use, I did try that too, and predictably, it went without issue. Install will vary a bit from PC to PC depending on your motherboard, but even if you've never ever done this before, it is a pretty simple procedure. So if you're a newbie, no need for the panic button here. There are no data cables, no power cables, you just plop it into the M.2 slot and it does only go in one way, so you cannot screw that up, and you secure it with the screw, and you're done. It's that simple. Next step is setting it up in Windows Drive Manager. Step after that is fill it with games. Step after that, play games. But I've told you what it says on the box, let's actually run some tests and see what it does in real life. For a quick and dirty but extremely informative comparison, here's some Crystal Disk Mark Drive benchmark results. The CS3040 is so much faster than the standard SATA 3 SSD, it's ridiculous when you see them side by side like this. And that's not some junky old drive either that I've used to game the results here. That's a very good SSD from one of the top brands on the planet. In fact, I like them so much, there's two of those damn things in this one machine. But oh 
Man, those SATA 3 drives just cannot keep stride with the bandwidth that PCIe 4.0 can offer up. Now, a lot of people, especially gamers who aren't necessarily full-on tech heads, but just want the best gaming possible, so obviously they get a PC gaming rig. Come at me, console plebs. But a lot of them think that SSDs really only affect load times because, well, that's one of the most immediate and obvious differences that anybody will notice when upgrading to a faster drive is shortened load times, both starting the game cold, the game starts faster, and in between levels it loads faster, and starting a round you're ready to go faster, even fast travel can load really a lot faster. But there's other subtler differences too, especially in open world games who constantly stream assets from the drive to the GPU as you race through that world. So it can also smooth out, or even virtually eliminate, pop-in, and even stuttering. And in the worst cases, I'm sure you've seen this in some games, just some bits of the world just not being there and just sort of exploding into existence right in front of your face, like like even closer than what would be a normal pop in distance. So if you are out there thinking, oh, I don't care about an extra 15 seconds of load time, I'm fine, I've got patience, I can wait an extra 25 seconds to load a level, what am I in a rush for? Well, just know that it's not the only thing you're saying no to, it's across the board when it comes to gaming, which is why Sony went to such great lengths to engineer their console to take advantage of things like Direct Drive. Let's have a talk about that actually. Now, to be fair, there aren't a lot of games around right now where you'll see a massive difference between installing it on a regular SSD or even a Gen 3 SSD M.2 drive and these Gen 4 drives. The Gen 4s are much faster, but most games don't really take advantage of that yet. You will see a relatively minor improvement on things like load times, and you will see sort of streaming assets in open world games come in a lot better and a lot faster. However, I'm just talking about right now. Very, very soon now, we're getting the next Windows, Windows 11, which does have technology built into it, which will be rolling back to Windows 10, but in a somewhat less efficient fashion. But that will do a thing like the consoles have been doing, where your GPU can have much more direct access to the game assets sitting on these drives. So it doesn't have to go via the CPU first, and doing that is going to speed up a lot of stuff. And like I just mentioned, the consoles are already doing this. The PS5 made a big splash about it, flailing their hands and bragging about it. And so more and more developers are looking to take advantage of this kind of stuff to make their games run better and faster and quicker and stronger in adjectives. So looking forward, a PCIe Gen 4 drive like this will be a very desirable thing for gamers going on. So there you are, that's my quick and sponsored look at the Accelerate CS3040 M.2 NVMe SSD. Simple, clean, fast, and chances are a much more budget-friendly option for a high-speed, high-performance PCIe 4.0 NVMe SSD for PC, so many acronyms, and for PlayStation 5 or PS5 if you like. Gaming use than a lot of the other choices out there, I'd give it a good hard look if I were you. And of course, one last time, thank you again for PNY for sponsoring this look at their new hotness, or their new coolness, really, because, yeah, again, low power keeps the temperatures under control. Hotness in the figurative sense, not the literal sense. You know what I mean. So thank you to all of you for watching the video and making it to the end, and a special thank you to the patrons scrolling up above there for their above and beyond support. I am Blunty. I do appreciate you watching all the way through to the end, and I will catch you next time.